Hello everybody, a very warm welcome back to what's left of the Mectech garage. It's still absolutely crammed full of stuff and I am working in an area this big at the moment, but there we go, that's besides the point. Today we're gonna to be working on my dad's Mini Cooper R56 bonnet. If you saw the previous video on the Mini when we did the Union Jack roof, you would have seen that the bonnet desperately needs painting. Now we did get another bonnet for the car, but we didn't know at the time that it was actually for a petrol car and it's different to a diesel, so now we know that obviously it wouldn't fit. So I've got the original bonnet here now, which I'm gonna to attempt to refinish and repaint. So obviously it's got a fair bit of lacquer peel on it. I'll grab the camera and I'll show you exactly what the problem is. Obviously with most red cars nowadays with lacquer over the top, they do have a tendency to peel. So let me show you what we've got and what we've got to do. And then let's get cracking. Right, so as you can see, the bonnet is peeling all over now it was semi like this when dad bought the car but nowhere near as bad it was in a couple of spots but as you can see it's peeled right the way up there to the back uh, in various places now as well along the front obviously where stone chips have hit and things like that and it's going the same way over here so the first thing i'm going to do is actually get the airline on it same as i did with the roof i'm going to get the airline on it and we're going to blast off as much of this lacquer as we can um, to obviously uh, aid less sanding as such and then obviously the bits that won't blast off with the airline, then we'll obviously have to carry on sanding. I need to take the badge off as well. So we'll obviously do that. So let's get set up, get this uh, thing blasted with the airline and then get the sander going. Right, I've given that a quick initial sand with some 80 grit in the sand as you would have just seen. Now I've only gone over it pretty fast, but as you can see it really shows up all the areas that the, where the lacquer isn't. So all the white you can see is the lacquer that I've obviously roughed up. And all the red you can see is the base coat underneath where it's obviously what I want to get back down to effectively. But it's going to take a bit longer to obviously do that. I roughed it up with 80 grit to start with. I'm going to go down to 120 now, or up to 120 now because I don't want to get little swirls in the paint when I get down to the base coat side of things. I want to obviously keep it as smooth as I possibly can so that when we re repaint it, you won't be able to see any marks in the paint. So I'm going to carry on like that. I'm going to confirm my mask now, so I'm going to get that on um, and uh, carry on with the finer papers and hopefully we'll have this thing back down to red and obviously the few bits of bare metal that I've already gone through where it was really thin, I'll have to put a bit of primer over, but that's okay. We did the same on the roof and that was fine. So um, yeah. So I'm just going to carry on like that and uh, once it's all sanded back to a satisfactory level then we can start getting it um, bits of primer put on it and get it wet flatted and ready for some base coat. Top and on, let's carry on. Radio. after about an hour and a bit's worth of sanding that is what we've got <laughs> um, it's obviously uh, a bit patchy and you can see it's gone through to the undercoat in a fair few places the red is incredibly thin in fact I've just seen a bit I've missed it I need to sand that bit there because that's still lacquer going up there and that bit there so I need to just sand those bits there's a few bits like that that I've found around here and there um, but majority of it is all sanded back now so the next thing I'm going to do now is obviously get some primer over all these bare metal spots there are quite a few of them unfortunately but it couldn't be helped so I'm going to get some primer over those obviously let that go off maybe do two coats just a light sort of couple of light coats and uh, then we can flat it back with some really fine wet and dry get it all lovely and smooth and then we can start putting some red back on it let's carry on Right, with my uh, camo effect primer now put on the bonnet, I've done two layers, um, only time lapse, time lapse one because obviously it's the same thing twice. 
I'm now going to get that flatted down with some uh, fine wet and dry. Not sure what grade I'm going to use yet. Probably maybe some 2000 or something like that. Might, or might, might, might be a bit too fine, but we'll see. Um, anyway, I'm going to get it flatted down, ready for a uh, base coat, and that should hopefully be enough prep to get it looking uh, half decent. Now, I'm under strict instructions from my dad not to go too mad and get it too perfect. That's what he said. But obviously, I want it to look half decent, so uh, yeah. Get this flatted back and uh, hopefully then we can start get, so get some red going. Right, there we go, there is our bonnet all rubbed back after its primer. Um, it is as smooth as I can get it. It's not gonna be absolutely million percent perfect. There is a hell of a lot of stone chips on it and obviously lacquer pill was everywhere so I've done my best with it. Um, you're probably wondering why I've got it propped up sort of in a vertical position. The reason for that is um, I would ideally like to do it flat so that the paint can't run anywhere but because we're using spray cans, they don't work very well up the wrong way if that makes sense so the bonnet needs to be sort of semi vertical so that the cans can be up the right way when they're spraying to get the best results that's my thinking behind it anyway so I'm going to give this one more rub down with some um, brake cleaner just to give it make sure it's as clean as it can be and then we'll get some red on the go let's get this done Right, we are, I think, four coats in, and I've run out of paint, or I've actually just gone and got another can. Um, it is a little bit stripy, as you can see. That is the problem with doing such a big panel with cans. So what I'm gonna do, obviously I've got one more can now. I'm gonna go over it again, a little bit heavier, try and get a nice coverage all over, maybe go in slightly different directions so that it obviously covers better, and uh, hopefully we should be able to uh, get rid of those zebra stripes that are currently in it, because that's no good, I can't be dealing with that, so. Here we go, let's uh, get one more coat on, a bit heavier, and hopefully that will uh, do the trick. Righty-ho, I've emptied another can of red onto the bonnet. As you can see, it is a lot, lot better. Um, it's not as good as I'd like it if I'm honest as far as being not stripey but I think once the lacquer's on there it should blend it all in nice with any luck and that's what I'm hoping anyway it isn't it isn't too bad really I think because it's in base coat at the moment it shows up any any marks and whatever on it um, a lot more so I'm hoping that uh, yeah the lacquer's gonna obviously give it all a uniform shine and it uh, should be good hopefully. So fingers crossed I've got it covered enough that it's gonna be all right. So three cans of red paint should be enough really, shouldn't it? So uh, yeah, that's where we're at at the moment. I'm just looking down the sides here. I think I've got the sides all looking all right. Um, I've got a funny little line up here, but that's where I've gone slightly heavier on this section to that section and it's got a little dry bit, but that again will, will go once it's lacquered. So uh, yeah, there we go. Let's uh, 
do the screw bit now and get the lacquer on the go. <laughs> Rightio, there we go, that is the bonnet all finished and lacquered and laid flat again. Now it isn't by any stroke of imagination perfect. There are a fair few bits of dirt all over it. It looks very good in the camera actually. Um, but considering that's out of a can, that ain't bad really. Um, so what I'm going to do now is spend probably a hell of a long time flattening it all down with some 2000 grit paper and polishing it all up and getting it looking absolutely best it possibly can be. And hopefully then that will be good enough to go back on the car. So let's get that done and then we can uh, go about fitting this thing back on when we get up in Norfolk. Right, it's at this point in the video you're thinking, he's completely ruined that bonnet, he's completely absolutely knackered and, not, and it's never going to look good ever again. Well, I thought that when I first did it, but it does actually come back. Now, I've dried it all off as you can see, um, and there are a few areas that I've missed, like that area there that's still a little bit shiny, um, that I just want to go over. There are a few little tiny indentations in the paint, but I'm not going to go too mad on them, because obviously I don't want to flat through the bits around them if that makes sense and once it's all shiny you probably won't notice them so that's what I'm going for on that side of things so I'm going to get this last few bits sort of rubbed down um, and then we'll get the polisher going with some 3M fast cut and hopefully get this looking mega mega shiny and really really good ready to go on the car let's crack on right I've gone over the uh bits of dirt that were left over a little bit more and uh, got them to a standard where I think I'm happy with them so the next step now is going to be polishing now for a start you don't want this on a very fast speed because you want it to be controlled and you don't want to burn through the paint also if you go too fast the paint heats up and gives you a false illusion of it being shiny because all the little marks and scratches in the paint disappear because it heats up and they sort of shrink to themselves and then when it cools down again they come back so you need to obviously go a fair bit slower um, to make sure that you're actually polishing it up properly rather than obviously just making it look like you're having it and it hasn't so let's I'll just show you a little patch live and then we'll get on and crack on and get this polished up
whatever reason, my polisher doesn't seem to be going as slow as it normally does. I don't know why, but still, that was slow enough. And you can see now, when I buff that up, you end up with that. Let me grab the camera and I'll show you. And if that ain't a good shine out of a can of paint, I don't know what is. I'm pretty chuffed with that. You can see the reflection of the light there. It's nice and crisp. So basically I'm going to go over the whole bonnet like that now, get it all polished in the same manner, and hopefully we should have a mega looking bonnet to go back on Dad's Mini. And there you go, that is the finished article. Now I've brought it outside so I can obviously see it in proper light as such. Um, it does show a lot more under fluorescent lights, all the little imperfections. So I've obviously got them all out underneath that light in the hope that it will look good in real light, if that makes sense. Now it's no, by no means perfect. There are some imperfections in it, but that spray can, that's a pretty good finish, I reckon. There's a couple of little bits in there in the paint which have sort of uh, not gone quite right and obviously there are a couple of dings in the bonnet as well but you know it is what it is unfortunately it's, it's a it come off of a 57 ridge car so it's not going to be perfect but it is uh, more than acceptable I think so that should be should be okay I reckon there are is one little run I've just noticed there which I haven't quite got out it's only quite minor um, the big one at the front there I managed to get pretty much all that out so I don't want to go too mad with it in case I mess it up but I've just noticed another one there so I may have to just uh, go over those two little areas again now I've got it out in the sunlight and I can see them um, that's the uh, downside of painting it vertical you will obviously get um, runs and bits in it I couldn't do it flat because as I say the cans don't work very well flat so all right I'm going to flat those two areas down I think and repolish them now I can see them out in the light and uh, I think that will be good to go. Top banana. Righty ho, by the magic of video editing we are now in Norfolk as you can see and the little mini is sitting here and I've got the new bonnet in the back of the car so let's get this fitted back on and uh, hopefully it will look absolutely marvellous. So hopefully I better do this on my own because I'm here on my own at the moment so let's uh, see what we can do. hoping this is just going to slot on because the bolts are on slots on the top but it is a bit tricky on my own I might have to get some help possibly uh, that's what I'm going to do I'm just going to rest it on my foot a minute and see where the bolts are out enough because I've got to be able to clear the hinges on your own this but still because it's got these slotted holes on the top holes it uh, makes things a bit easier I'm hoping I'm going to have to do it try and turn it over get the other way um, it's a bit Lift it up 
one side in, like that. There we go. That's it. Now, I should have got the other bolts ready. <laughs> Where are the other bolts? Uh, two red bolts. I don't know what I've done them. Tighten these ones up for me, so it can't go anywhere. I'm going to have to look for them. Right, stay there. since it doesn't flex the bonnet. Get them started and I'll get a ratchet out. Right, I'm going to line this up with the old marks and hopefully it will fit straight back where it was. So now I'm going to go ahead and put all the other bits of trimming everything back on and all the washer pipes and all the rest of it and uh, we should be back where we started again. <laughs> so uh, let's uh, crack on and get this done. Your eyes do not deceive you. This is a nice, tidy workbench, as you can see, because this is my dad's workbench. <laughs> and this is the final piece of trim that's got to go on the bonnet, which has got one, two, three, four clips missing off the back of it, which I unfortunately broke when we took it off. So I'm going to use a soldering iron. I'm going to melt these back on. I haven't got my hot staple gun up here, but I don't think I'd be able to use it in this application anyway, because this is very thin, and obviously you don't want to go through to the outside, because then it will show. So I'm going to do my best to try and melt these back on, We've also got the mini badge here, which I actually did off camera. Um, it was all peeling, so I pulled all the lacquer off and I've touched in all the black bits as best I can and I actually re-lacquered the centre of it. So that is nice and shiny again now as well. So that's really good, but it needs some new tape on the back, which we've got some of here. So we're going to use some of this tape. This is my dad's tape. He uses this for um, putting relays and things in boxes when he's making electronics. Um, and it's also used for number plates and things like that. Not that he uses it for that, but it'll be more than strong enough hopefully to hold this badge on so I'm going to cut some of that obviously around the back of these pins on the back of here as well get all that ready to go and go back on the bonnet and then we can get these put back on the car and we should be somewhere near it so let's uh, not waffle on let's crack on get these bits melted back on as, as such and uh, get it back on the car
finishing touch. Top banana. Right, final job on the mini before it gets a real nice clean is this mirror cover. Now it's all peeling on here. Normally we just obviously take it off and paint it, but that doesn't manage to get another one, so hopefully this will just pop off. So we've been told. I've not done this before, so if I'm doing it wrong. You know why. Good job that needs painting, isn't it? I've got the new one. Alright. Here's a, a new, brand new second hand one. Which is in the right colour and in a lot better condition, obviously. Hopefully, this just clicks on in the reverse. I don't get the feeling this is the wrong one. Do you? Is it just the same? It does, yeah. yeah. So I seem to want to go back on, I don't know why. Just keep persevering. on yet but there's a massive gap around here look yeah, yeah. and there is no the other one no that's not the right one definitely not the right one yeah okay so I might be painting a mirror cover then looks like it yeah have you got any paint left well you bought some paint didn't you Do this with. Right, it looks like we're going to have to paint this one because that other one is the wrong one. I've seen it's the wrong one, so a uh, bit of uh, paint work to do. Right, I've set up a little uh, spray area. This is this what white stuff is actually the backing from the Union Jack roof we put on the car. <laughs> so I'm going to use that to spray this cover on. I've spent a bit of time off camera. Um, Flatten this all back, and as you can see, the top obviously is um, gone through to plastic and primer underneath because that was where it was all scratched and pitted. So, I'm going to give this a quick clean with some brake clean. We've got some white primer I've just found in Dad's garage, which is handy. And he already had bought a can of paint to up and some lacquer to paint this with, but then he found the other one online. So, obviously, he wasn't going to do this, but because they've obviously said it's the right one and it's not. We are doing it this way now instead, so that's all right. Um, I'm just uh, wondering if I can get this on something so that the edge isn't on the floor, because otherwise it'll stick. Um, just spied an old smash tin. No idea how old this is. Remember smash? 
Looks so like that's a glucose powder in it, that's what he's got labelled on it. Anyway, put that on there. In fact, what I'll do, get that all right. I'm going to get some white primer on here first. I've just wiped that over with some brake cleaner. Just want to get this area a little bit of primer, just so that it's covered. Don't want too much. Just like that. And there's one little bit on the back there which is I've had to go through on because it was like a chip that I'd have to flat back. So I'm gonna just dust it on there like that. I'm not gonna go too mad because there is still some prime on it. It's only showing plastic in a few places. Let that go off, we'll give it a quick flat down and then we can get some red on there. Get it looking absolutely marvellous. Right, the uh, primer's now flatted down. Let's give it a little coat of red. The lacquer out the way. Oh, this can's got some uh, gusto to it. Right, leave that out for a minute. We'll do another coat in a second. <laughs> Right, whilst the car is still wet, I'm gonna run some 2000 grit paper over these headlights so that when we polish it all up, it'll look really, really smart and it'll give the front a bit of a lift, hopefully. So let's get that done. And then we can move on to polishing the whole car. Do this while it's wet, and then obviously I can re rinse it off with the uh, jet wash so I haven't got residue everywhere. Then that's the plan, anyway. Now, this isn't a permanent uh, fix for these headlights, they would need re lacquering, like I did on my Puma videos, if you wanted them to last. But obviously, I haven't got any lacquer up here, and we are actually selling this car, so just want it to look nice and presentable. And obviously if anyone in the future wants to go down the route of uh, re them then they can. So basically you just get some 2000 grit wet and dry, rub it all over the headlights. You see all that milky like residue coming off, that is what the top layer of lacquer effectively being, or the, the discoloured layer of lacquer I should say, being rubbed back. So you are taking a layer off of this, so there's obviously only so many times you can do it. But it does uh, make a massive, massive difference to the front of the car usually. A bit of suds in the water doesn't hurt, keeps the paper lubricated. Go over them like that till they all look sort of till it looks like a uniform matness. Matness is that word? <laughs> and, uh, and obviously, once you polish them up again, they'll come up lovely. Do the same with this one. Right now, the car's all dry. Get a little bit of this uh, fast cut compound on here. 
give the headlights a nice polish. Hopefully, it'll come up all right. Yeah. Dad's here if you haven't noticed. What's that? It's a dad's here if you hadn't noticed. Yeah. That is brilliant, isn't it? Well, it looks better than yellow, doesn't it? So. Yeah. Right, well, I'm basically going to do the other one just like that. Just like that. And uh, then we'll get on to the bodywork. Right, I'm not going to do any uh, grand reveal shots because the black arches need, still need to be done. Dad's going to do that and the mirror cover has not finished painting yet. Um, but that is after a polish and a coat of wax and obviously the tyres are being dressed as we speak with the foam running down them. So I'm pretty pleased with that. If you look at that bonnet now, it's not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. Especially against all the chrome, it looks really, really good. Now remember, this car is going to be up for sale. I'm giving you a little walk round of it now. If anyone is in the market for a nice little Mini Cooper diesel, the Union Jack roof, then this could be the one for you. It's a really, really nice, clean little car. Considering it's 17 years old, you wouldn't think so. There we go, look at that, looks really, really smart. There's a few bits inside need clearing out, but you can see the inside. It's the R56 shape, 2007 November, as I said to you earlier. Diesel, I'll just show you under the bonnet again. Now it's all nice and clean. I've got 
find the uh, handle. There, it is. there we go. Look at that. That looks absolutely superb. Really, really nice. Not too shiny, just clean and presentable. Which is exactly what you want. Headlights have come up really well. Again, they're not permanent. They really want re him but they'll obviously last a fair while like that. So that is superb. Dad's going to do, as I say, do the black bits on the arches. Just missed a bit of polishing up there. <laughs> Get that while we're there. Um, yeah, Dad's going to do the black bits of the arches. He's got some special stuff that you paint on and then leave. Shuts nice. Look at that. <laughs> so yeah, that is a uh, top done. Top banana. Right then, that is going to be it for this episode on MechTech. We have had a really successful day on the old Mini. It is looking the nuts with that bonnet now all repainted and obviously tractor going past. <laughs> and obviously the Union Jack roof as well. It looks really, really smart now as I'm sure, or I hope you will agree. It is going to be up for sale, this little Mini. So if you are interested, put a little note in the comments or ping me an email. And obviously we can talk business if you uh, wanted to do that and obviously that would be absolutely superb now if you do like videos like this make sure you do four things for me like subscribe share and hit that notification bell it's all free it costs you absolutely nothing and i really really do appreciate it it is helping the channel out massively by you doing those things so i would really appreciate it if you could do that that would be superb and all left me to say is thank you very much for watching and if you want to join me soon for more automotive adventures i will see you again next time Cheers guys.